Hello everybody, it's Tom Seidner and in this video I am going to go over all the things you need to make a lap counter for your uh, track. Now I run a Carrera digital track but I have a converter box on my track that I can convert my track to analog. But when I'm running an analog I lose all the functionality of the digital like changing lanes and being able to pick up the laps when the cars go around the track. So in order to be able to keep track of my laps and be able to um, send information to Smart Race when I'm running an analog, I put some sensors into my track. These are simple um, track sensors that use a beam that the uh, flag of the car breaks as it goes through and sends a, an information to an Arduino that um, all, then sends the information over to Smart Race. And all of that stuff can be seen in another video. So check out my other videos. And in my other videos, I show how to make the track with the sensors in them. And I also show you how to set up the Arduino if you want to do an Arduino. But the other option is to have a lap counter that just counts the number of laps as you go around. So let me uh, show you a little bit about the functionality of the uh, lap counter. And then when I come back, we'll talk about what you need to build it, all the items you need to build it, and how and how all that works okay so here's a little example of the uh, lap counter in action just so you can see it working I've got it hooked up to a Arduino here um, I'm running it off the 3 volt uh, portion of the Arduino and of course I've got a ground I've got it running to this this board here for temper just so I can uh, send power and ground to the um, counter and the uh, lane so the lane is using the photo sensors there's one here and one here and they're running off 3 volt also that's why I designed this to work with 3 volt it should work with 5 volt but um, I'm not running at 5 volt so your um, mileage may vary on that but uh, you can give it a try but pretty much what happens is when you turn on the Arduino it's going to come up with some random stuff here on the screen if you don't have it uh, set to do anything different and then you're going to have to reset it so I'm gonna go ahead and reset it here with this and then it'll go to zero and then we're going to just uh, when a car goes through there it's going to light this LED and it's also going to increase the lap number and then as you can see every time I run through that sensor it's going to go up so it's a pretty simple design and I'm going to uh, go over um, you know all the components for it and um, you know what you need to do to make it work and all the different connectors that are available for the different um, you know inputs and outputs for the uh, for the counter so uh, let's get into that now okay so first I want to reiterate I want to say that this lap counter does not require an Arduino to run I'm only using the Arduino in order to get power for the sensors and for the lap counter so that's the only function that uh, the Arduino is doing in that last clip now if you want to be able to communicate with smart race or uh, race coordinator or anything like that you will need an Arduino but if you just want to be able to have a cars break the sensor and show you their laps um, then you do not need an Arduino if you have a 3 volt uh, power source that you can hook up to this then you can just use that you don't need an Arduino at all I designed this to work with 3 volts because my sensors in the track are using 3 volts uh, but I'm pretty sure that all the components on this board will work with 5 volts I just have not tested it so you can uh, run it on 5 volts if you want and test it not guarantee you that it's gonna work but I don't think it'll destroy anything if you want to try it so that being said let's go ahead and take a look at the the board and what you need to actually make this lap counter. So this is the PCB that I designed. Um, you can get this PCB on PCB Way. This is uh, the second version of this. The first version that I made had some issues. I had to cut some traces, include some wires on the back because I had a couple traces that were in the wrong place. But this is the second version and you shouldn't have to do anything special with this except for solder all the components on and hook up your wires. And that should be it. Um, so let's just go real quick over what you need for this. So the first thing you're going to need is this board, this PCP board. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need 25 3K resistors. 
Okay, you're going to need four 10K resistors. You're going to need uh, one 74LS00. You're going to need an LED of some color. In this case, I've got a red one. You're going to need three CD4026 chips. You're going to need three LCD seven segment displays. And these displays are CL5611AH. You're going to need a micro momentary switch. And you're going to need some way to connect to the board. Now I'm using these little connectors here as you can see. Uh, but you can actually just solder wires directly into the board uh, to make this work. And those are all the components that you're going to need. Now I'm going to put a list of all these components down in the description with links to Amazon. I am not an Amazon affiliate. I get no money from for you buying these from Amazon. But um, I'll put the links down there so you'll know exactly what I bought. Uh, but feel free to buy these from anywhere you want. Okay, so let's go over a couple things. This... Um, 74LS00, this is just a flip-flop chip and all I'm using it for is to convert the um, signal from a high to a low and I'll explain that here in a minute. And then these chips, these uh, CD4026 chips, these are what they call decade counter chips and the decade just means 10 and so what they do is they count from uh, zero to nine and then they send a signal out one of their legs to the next chip so that it knows to, to count from zero to nine and then uh, the third one is the is for the third chip so each one of these chips runs one of these displays and changes it from zero one two three four five six seven eight nine and when it gets to nine this one goes back to zero and it sends something to the next chip to go to one and that's how you end up being able to count up to 999 laps on this lap counter. So this lap counter will handle 999 laps. So on this board we're going to just solder all these items on. Um, you're going to solder your LCD displays here where you've got the pictures of the LCD displays. Uh, each one of these displays requires 3K resistors for the display. So we've got uh, eight resistors for each display and you can go ahead and solder those into the place. I'm using the uh, quarter watt small resistor so I would highly recommend using these small ones. Half watts are going to be big and they're going to be pretty clunky on this board so these are quarter watt resistors. And then you're just going to stick the legs through here. They're, it doesn't matter which direction you put the uh, resistors in there. They're um, they're non-directional, so just put them in any way you want and just put one in each one of these pairs of holes. And then once you've got all uh, uh, 24 of those in, then uh, you're going to uh, also want to put your LCDs in there. Um, these three resistors here and two resistors here, uh, four of them are for pull downs and one of them is for the LED. The one for the LED is the one at the bottom right here. Uh, and so that one you're going to use a 3K in, and then the other four, the two over here and the top two in this row, you're going to put 10Ks in there. And those just pull the um, chips down to uh, ground so that they don't float. Um, and then you've got your, um, your, down here at the bottom is going to be your seven leg LS00. Um, zero, zero. And then these three here are going to be your eight leg um, uh, CD4026s. Now, it doesn't matter which chip you put where. All the wiring knows. So all these chips are identical. So you can just put whatever one. Now, I highly recommend you socket these. Um, you can buy sockets. Um, I, use, I use sockets on all mine. So I socket all of these chips in case they go bad. Uh, I can change them out. In fact, uh, the last one I did the uh, 74LS00 went bad on me while I was testing it and so I just popped it out and popped the new one in. So you can get sockets for all four of these and I highly recommend you use sockets in, in those areas. Uh, the other thing you have is that you have a momentary switch here. 
that momentary switch is switched from bottom to top. So make sure your switch is a switch that's switching from bottom to top. Um, and then uh, you've got your LED that goes right here and the um, positive goes on the outside. So the outside of this board is going to have the positive of your um, LED. LEDs are directional, so you have to put them in the right way. So make sure you put your um, positive leg, which is the longer leg. If you've got an um, LED and you look at it, you're going to have one leg is going to be longer than the other. And that longer leg is going to be your positive leg. And that leg is going to go on the outside of the board like that. So all you're going to do is you're just going to solder all those components onto this board and then once you've got everything um, soldered on you're going to connect it now it's got uh, six connectors down here and like i said you can use these little pins you can use a female connector on these or you can just wire your wires directly in here if you're if you've got a tight area um, where you want to keep the wires as close as possible you can just stick the wires through those holes and um, and uh, wire them in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a close-up of this board and I am going to go over the different um, pins on here so that you know how to connect this board up to your track. Okay, so here is a close-up shot of the PCB and I'll go over a few things here. Um, these locations here are where your 3K resistors will go. These are where your CD uh, 4026s will go. This is where your LED goes. This is the positive side, the long leg. Uh, this is where your uh, momentary reset switch will go. Uh, and these two will be 10K resistors for pull down. These top two will be 10K resistors for pull down. Uh, this will be a 3K for your LED. And then this right here is where your inputs go. And so let's go over the different inputs. So pin number one, which is the one in the top left here, that's going to be for power. And like I said, I designed this to run on three volts. So three volt power to here will work perfect. Uh, then the next pin over, this pin right here, will be your high data. So that high data means that the data is normally high and then goes low when the um, when it's triggered. And so it, the uh, sensors that I used in the uh, sensor track, they are high and then go low when the beam is broken. So this is the one you want to use if you're using the sensors that I used in the video on how to make the track. Um, this here, pin uh, three, is the reset so you can actually connect this to an Arduino or something it needs a high signal to reset so normally when you start this board up you have to click the reset button to get this to zeros it'll come up with just a bunch of garbage on the numbers but if you want it to automatically reset when you turn on your track you're going to have to hook something to here to give it a temporary, just a quick high signal. You can do that with an Arduino. You can program an Arduino to send a high signal on start to a pin and just send that here and then you can reset. Uh, pin number four here in the bottom left is going to be your ground. That's going to go to the ground that you're using to power this board. And then pin number uh, five here is going to be your um, counter with a low signal. So if you've got a low signal and then when you break the beam it goes high, then you want to use this pin down here. Now um, the sensors that I used in my track do not use this so I don't use this pin at all, but if you've got a um, if you've got a low signal that's going high, you can count laps with that. And then this last pin is not used at all. It's uh, not hooked to anything, so you can just ignore that one. So that's all the pins and how you hook this up to your track. Okay, so that's it. So that's how you put together and connect the lap counter to your sensor track or any other sensor uh, that you have that will either create a high signal or a low signal. Now, of course, if you guys have any questions at all, you can uh, put them down in the comments. I always answer my comments, and I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. I also, in the description of this video, will put the link to this PCB board on PCB Way. 
Also a link to all of the items that I purchased from Amazon to do this project. And so, like I said, you can order these from Amazon or you can order them from anywhere you want. At least you'll have a link to go to to see exactly what the items are. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this is helpful. Uh, if you're wanting to do lap counting on a analog track, be it Carrera or Scale Electric or Carrera Go or AFX or any other track, this should work for you. Um, hope this helps and I hope you enjoy it. If you guys do enjoy it, subscribe, hit that notification button and uh, you'll be notified if I make any more videos of additions that I've made to my track. Here at the, uh, here at the end, I'll put a quick uh, picture of my lap counter. I uh, have two. Mine are blue because they were the original board, but it's the exact same board, but this one has been fixed. And I'll show you how I put mine on my track. I made a little billboard for mine and I set mine behind a building and uh, it'll give you kind of a little uh, example of how you can use these. And anyway, until I see you guys again, happy racing.